Good afternoon, everyone. It's three o'clock and we'll get started. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us for today's weekly briefing. As always, I am joined by my colleagues from the Executive Policy Group of the Emergency Leadership Team, Mrs. Powell, Dean Busby, Dean Snavely, and Chief Holland. Today, we will share an update on COVID-19 cases. Then we'll be joined by our special guests who will provide an in-depth review of the HBCU grant funds available through the CARES Act legislation. We'll leave time to answer questions at the end of the briefing. If you have additional questions, you may always email them to luelt at langston.edu. Dean Busby will now share an update on COVID-19. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as we have done each week, uh, we will continue to provide an update on the current situation of COVID-19 for the local vicinity and for the Langston University community. As of noon today, September uh, 14th, 2020, uh, Oklahoma has seen a 1.3 increase daily uh, which pushes our total cases over 70,000, uh, 70,223, as you see there. Uh, and our active cases have gone over 10,000 uh, with, uh, with a 4.3% increase. Uh, and we've had no deaths, thankfully no deaths, uh, since the last report that we received. And there's a total recovery of 59,007 uh, Oklahomans. Here in Logan County, uh, we have total cases of 363. Uh, 55 active cases and only one uh, death here in Logan County. Uh, for Langston University, here on Langston University, uh, our total case count is 20, and I'm happy to report that we are down uh, in active cases. Uh, we are down to nine, of course, uh, for a total recovered at 11. Please continue to monitor our COVID-19 resource page for any additional updates. Thanks, Dean Busby. CARES Act Federal Legislation. CARES stands for the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, which is legislation passed to provide economic support for those who experienced hardships during the COVID-19 pandemic. The CARES Act contains a special provision for higher education and another provision for Minor, minority serving institutions such as HBCUs. Uh, these provide emergency grants to students and allow us to receive funding to assist with operational hardships incurred by the institutions themselves. The Langston University CARES Act HBCU grant has been established to help with everyday expenses like rent and groceries or specialized needs like access to Wi-Fi and online resources. The HBCU grant will provide financial assistance to alleviate short-term financial stress related to the ongoing pandemic and address specific needs of individual students. Now, we would like to welcome our special guests for today's webinar. Cynthia Buckley, Assistant Vice President for Student and Employee Services, and Sheila McGill, Executive Director for Enrollment Management. Mrs. Buckley and Mrs. McGill will be helping us review the components of the HBCU grant, including eligibility, how to apply, areas of need covered by the grant, the application review process, as well as the award process. So let's get started. Mrs. McGill, thanks for joining us. How will students know if they're eligible to receive funding through the HBCU grant? Ms. McGill, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Students must be eligible to participate in programs under Section 484 in Title IV of the Higher Education Act of 1965. 
student must have a 2021 FAFSA on file with the university, and the student must be enrolled in at least one class for the fall 2020. Students who receive the HEERF funding in spring 2020 may apply for CARES Act HBCU grant funding as well. Thank you, Ms. McGill. Tell us a little bit about who might be ineligible or who wouldn't qualify for this grant. Sure. Students who are ineligible for Title IV federal funding, students enrolled through the Second Chance Pell Program unless they were recently released, international students unless they are U.S. citizens or have a green card, and students concurrently enrolled who do not have a high school diploma or equivalency. Thank you, Mrs. McGill. Mrs. Buckley, thanks for joining us as well. Could you tell us how students can apply for the HBC grant? Absolutely, the application will open today, Monday, September 14th, 2020, and it will close at 11.59 p.m. on Friday, September 25th. So again, the application will open on today. Uh, students can use the QR code that's on the, available on the slide to access the application. And once complete, uh, they can complete the application identifying one or more categories of greatest need as described within the application. Thank you, Mrs. Buckley. The application requires that students indicate areas of need that they need funding to address. What are those areas? The areas of need are rent and housing, utilities, medical dental expenses, tr transportation expenses, child care costs, food, tuition and fee assistance, course materials, technology needs, or there may be needs for costs relative to illness or death of an immediate family member. And there could be other costs that we don't have listed here, but you can provide that information on the application and we will consider those as well. Thank you, AVP Buckley. Mrs. McGill, please tell us more about how the applications will be reviewed. Sure. Applications will be reviewed by the Langston University CARES Act HBCU Grant Committee. Each applicant will be required to participate in an interview with the committee. The committee has the authority to make all final decisions on awards and will communicate with applicants directly. Langston University cannot guarantee that all applicants will be selected for funding. Thank you, Mrs. McGill. So AVP Buckley, once the committee has made their decisions, tell us a little bit more about how the award process will work. Absolutely. Uh, award amounts will be determined based on the number of applications received, the availability of funds, and the specific needs for which assistance is requested. Initial award notifications will be made no later than Friday, October 23rd. Students will receive funds through the normal refund process. If students, you have arranged for your direct deposit, the grant funds will be automatically transferred to your bank account on file. For students who do not use direct deposit, paper checks will be mailed via postal mail to the address on file. We encourage students to monitor your Langston University email for refund notifications. Mrs. Buckley and Mrs. McGill, thank you both so much for joining us today and for sharing your expertise. We know the committee is eager to receive applications and begin making award decisions to help our students. Before we close, we have a few reminders and we'll address questions. Our next weekly webinar will be held next Monday, September 21st at three o'clock Central Daylight Time. And we'll cover two topics, student life and campus dining services. Again, please continue to monitor your Langston University email and our COVID-19 resource page for additional information and current updates. Also, please remember if you have not already done so to complete the acknowledgement form for the Protect the Pride plan. If you have additional questions, direct them to luelt at langston.edu.
will now open for questions. If you have any questions, please place them in the chat. Well, that means that Mrs. Buckley and Mrs. McGill did an excellent job. Uh, looks like actually we do have a couple of questions that have just come through. First question, are these funds available for out-of-state students? So yes, there, there's not an in-state, out-of-state requirement for this, uh, as long as the student meets those recommend those uh, requirements, general requirements. Um, it doesn't matter if you're an in-state student or an out-of-state student, you will be eligible for the funds. Thanks, Dean. There's also a request to return to the slide that has the QR code. Just a note. Go ahead, Mrs. Powell. We will also be sending a notification via email with instructions to apply, and it will include the direct link to apply. This will all also be included on our COVID-19 resource page. I'm just going to add, you know, once you once a student goes to the QR code or clicks on the link in the message that goes out today, uh, you may have questions. Certainly, send those to LUELT. We'll also have another webinar next week, even though it's on um, student life and campus dining, we'll be able to answer questions in that session as well. So there'll be plenty of opportunity to answer questions before the close of the application. And as always, we will be posting this video online and sharing it so you can expect to receive an email from the Office of Public Relations once it is available. All of the uh, videos are linked on the university's YouTube page. You can also find them on our COVID-19 resource page, and we will upload the video link to D2L as well. So you'll be able to find it through a lot of different resources. Okay, I don't see any other questions in the chat. So as we did last week, we'd like to close by highlighting uh, an act of resilience on our campus. There are so many. And again, if there is an act of resilience that you would like highlighted, please make sure you send that nomination to our LUELT at langston.edu account. But today I'd like to highlight our faculty who have been resilient in the face of an ever-changing environment. Uh, so much has changed in the last few months, including what our classrooms look like. So they've gone from chalkboards to whiteboards to now our classroom technology units are the CTUs. So for the past few months, our faculty have really jumped both feet in and learned how to utilize these classroom technology units to improve the interactions in the class and to make sure that student learning continues, whether the students are in the classroom or completing the course uh, in the FLEX model. We have a few pictures in this presentation. These are only three of the many professors who are utilizing the CTUs every day. There you'll see Dr. Nisa, one of our new faculty members who teaches physical science as well as chemistry. When asked about the CTU, 
Uh, she said that she uses it in all of her classes this semester. She finds them very useful in teaching courses that require calculations and equations, and they help her explain and allow students to better understand the materials. We also have Dr. Tedessa from our math department. In addition to Dr. Tedessa, we caught Dr. Naidu in action. There are so many classrooms where these CTUs have really changed the face of instruction here at Langston. We asked other professors to give us a sense of what this CTU has meant. Another one of our new faculty members, Professor Daniel Thompson in the Department of Communications, says that he uses the CTU to supplement his teaching and he's never had an issue with it. As a new faculty member, he planned to stick with the technology that he was familiar with, but he found the CTUs so easy to use that he couldn't help but incorporate them. Uh, Dr. Wonderful Faison from the Department of English says that the CTUs allow instructors to take notes, highlight specific materials, and focus student attention on particular concepts. Basically, they create a realistic face-to-face -face classroom feel. And then Dr. Reed from the Department of Biology says that the wide angle camera allows her virtual students to see her holding bones and models at the same time with the students who are present in the classroom. With the CTU, she can walk around the classroom and the students who are remote as well as the students who are in the classroom can see what's going on. She said that these are a great addition to her classes. And then finally, also from the Department of Biology, Dr. Oja said that the CTUs have been a lifesaver. The majority of her classes are hybrid and the CTUs are used regularly in both her lecture and her lab courses. Uh, it works just like a blackboard and allows her to engage with her online students as well as her uh, students in the classroom. So again, I'd just like to thank our faculty who have been so responsive in learning how to use the technology and uh, making everything a great experience for our students. Again, if you have any stories of resilience, please share, we'd love to highlight them. So in closing, as always, remember, take care, Lions. Have a great day, and we'll see you next week.